Good morning. For those of you who just started following our page, I'm Heather Bell. I have eight children. I adopted seven of my children, one through private adoption and six through foster care. I want to talk a little bit about our kids' birth parents and how my husband and I dealt with the birth parents, my thoughts on the birth parents, and my thoughts on sharing information about the birth parents. Let's get talking. Hi, we are Luke and Heather Bell and we have eight children and we are Just the Bells 10. To start, I just wanna give you a little bit of background if you don't already know our story about our children. Uh, my son David, he's our oldest. We adopted him through private adoption. We chose to keep it open. It was very important to us that David grew up knowing his birth family. Um, we also adopted Joshua, Haley, well, it'd be Joshua, Izzy, Haley, Robert, Brendan, and Noah through foster care. They came in at different ages with dif different circumstances. And then my son Gideon, I actually found out I was pregnant after eight years of infertility and we were surprised with Gideon. And so I had Gideon um, after eight years of trying to get to have a baby. So that's just a little history of our, our adoption story, our family. And now I want to kind of talk about the birth parents, um, ways that me and my husband dealt with birth parents, our thoughts on including birth parents in our family, and our thoughts or my thoughts on privacy when it comes to the birth parents and our children. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is when we adopted David. We adopted David first through private adoption. When you adopt through private adoption, you have an option to do um, closed or open. We chose to keep it open because we really felt like David needed to grow up to be a part of his birth family's life. I felt that if we were to keep it a secret or not, you know, not include them, eventually they'll find out, you know, and so we wanted it just to be a part of his life where he knew that, yeah, I didn't deliver him and, and his, and his birth family loves him just so if he had any questions, he could ask them. I just want to talk about the birth parents because I see a lot of conversation about it. And I want to tell you how me and my husband addressed it and what we did. So for David, we kept it open adoption because we really felt like for the healing of David and the healing of his birth family, I felt like they needed to be in each other's lives. And my husband agreed. And so I don't talk a lot about the birth families. And me and my husband sat down. And before we even started adopting our children, we agreed that we would never talk bad. If I cry, I'm sorry because I get so emotional when I talk about stuff like this. We would never talk bad about the birth parents in front of our children. Never. We would always lift them up. If we didn't have anything nice to say, you don't say anything, right? We would never do that. We would never use our children's birth parents to lift us up, to make us look better. Because let me tell you, I'm far from perfect. I'm far from perfect. Who am I to judge these other parents that have hit bumps in the road, that are struggling? We all struggle, right? I'm not going to use that to my advantage. It's not right. And so with David, I just want to tell you a little bit about his birth family. We did, we, we always are very positive to, to David and our other children. They know, and David knows that we love his birth mom and his birth family. He knows that. I'm going to lunch today with her. She's wonderful. She gives the best hugs in the whole wide world. When she hugs you, you know she loves you and she knows she cares about you and you know that she's invested in you. Seriously, she taught me how to hug. And, and I wanted to make sure on the privacy issue that that was kept private. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you about the specifics of their life because like I've said before, that's not my job to tell you about the specific specifics on why we adopted David, 
why his birth mom chose to give it up for adoption. That's not my story. That's the birth mom's story. And that's David's story. And if they want to tell that they can, but that's private, right? That's private. We don't talk about the birth families just because it's private and, and it's our children's decision, you know, and they have lives and, and they don't need me running on TikTok and YouTube saying, oh, this person and this is the instance. You know, I have shared our kids' adoption stories and how they came with us and how we end up adopting them because that's our story, right? So it's my story of how David came into my home. Now I'm gonna move on to foster care and how we dealt with birth families. My thoughts on that too, because really isn't foster care is kind of a different situation, right? Because the parents don't get to choose. The kids don't get to choose. I have so many thoughts on foster care. Um, we were foster parents for 11 years, almost 11 years. And whew, okay, let's move on now to foster care. So foster care is a different situation because I just feel like God didn't intend for families to be broken, right? Different circumstances cause families to be broken. My kids, I'm sure they, they would love to be with their families. They would love to be whole, but because of certain circumstances, the family was broken and it's in pieces. And, and yes, our children are with us. Am I their savior? I'm not their savior. They're my savior. My kids are the heroes. It's not me. It's not me. It's my kids who have gone through so much to be where they're at here right now. They're the saviors. They're the hero. I am nothing. I, I, I am their mom. I take care of them. I cook for them. I love them. But I'm not the hero. I'm, I don't deserve the pat on the back. My kids deserve the pat on the back. They're the ones that went through so much. And I'm sure right now they're still struggling because, right, we're supposed to be a family unit. And when something happens and breaks that family unit up, nobody wins. And I've said this before. Yes, I love my kids and they're doing great, but really nobody wins when a family gets broken. Nobody's the savior. Nobody wins. Nobody's better than anybody else because we've all gone through hard times, right? That's one of the reasons I don't judge my kids' birth parents. So I'm just going to get into detail on some of the things we dealt with, how we dealt with birth parents, our thoughts on birth parents concerning foster care. Each of our kids came into our home for different reasons. Several of our kids came into our home with rights already being terminated. And I know I've gotten comments. I've People message me, oh, you steal people's kids. You broke up families. I didn't. I was just a... a I was just a safe place, someone for the kids to come into, hoping their families would be able to get it together, you know, get it right. So for each of our kids, I'm not going to give specifics. I'm just going to tell you in general, just different things we dealt with because I don't want to pinpoint or give specifics about each of my kids or their birth families. So um, when one of our children came into our home that the parents were still trying to get, you know, their life together. Me and my husband chose to be a part of not only our children that or the kids that were coming into our home, but also the birth families because it really is healing for everybody, right? The birth family, they need support. The children need safety, a roof over their head, food, you know, um, being able to help them see the parents. So, so really foster fam families are a tool because right the ultimate goal like i've said before is to reunify a family if possible so we chose to be that tool that could help heal the family because we wanted our children to be able to go back with their families even though we loved them so much but when we got into foster care we knew what the goal was and so we chose to work with the families if they were clean if they were trying to get healthy and some of them weren't, but we still wanted to help them because why it was important to the kids, right? Because they love their families. Let me tell you something, no matter what a mom does to her child, even if it's the worst situation ever, that child is always going to love their mom. 
they're always gonna love their mom, even if they're angry. I know I've repeated this in a past video. They're always gonna love their mom. No matter how bad that mom is or how much of trouble she's into, never degrade her to, her ch to the children, even if you adopt them. Never make, her fe make them feel like she was incompetent, that she screwed up, that she, it's her fault. Don't ever do that. It doesn't matter. 10 years from now, the kids that I adopted, they're still gonna have a love for their moms. They're still gonna have a desire to wanna find them, reconcile with them. They're gonna have questions. They want that. That's instilled in us to love our moms no matter what, no matter how bad they are to us. That's that bond that God's given. No matter the situation, never put down, whether you've adopted them or not, their parents' mom in front of them. Don't ever do that. That's so destructive. It's so destructive. And what's the purpose? To make you look better? It's not going to make you look better. You're going to look like a fool. When your kids get old enough, they're going to see that you're a fool. And they're going to be angry. And you're going to have to deal with that. And then if they do choose to have a relationship with that parent later, you're going to struggle. Why? Because you didn't uplift those parents to the kids. So we chose to work with the parents. We picked parents up. We invite them to our home. We took our kids to their homes. We involved, we got them involved. And I think the reason we did this oh, by doing this, we have a friendship with a lot of them still because we opened our home if it was safe, because it's important that you support the whole unit. We have children that are good relationships with their grandmas and grandpas. We have children that have good relationships with their aunts and uncles, siblings. I have a couple of children that have just reconnected with siblings that they haven't seen in 10 years or even knew they had. So now that my kids are older, even though they're in their 20s, they're still searching. They're still searching because even if we adopted our children, they still want to be a part of their birth families. And we're okay with that. And once they get older, it ultimately is their decision whether we like it or not. We can advise them and say, hey, that might not be safe. Maybe reconsider, maybe ask around. But ultimately, it's their decision, right? And so I do feel that the reason our kids are so comfortable searching for family members and, and like our kids, they talk about their families in front of us and we're all comfortable with it. Why? Because we started that from the beginning. We were uplifting, we were encouraging and we wanted to heal, right? Because you, you don't want to make a kid feel bad or feel unwanted, right? So even though I adopted our children, like I adopted Haley, why would I down her mom to make her think her mom didn't love her? If you love your children, you want them to feel, always feel loved, right? No matter the situation. So we involved these birth families into our lives. We let them come over for Christmas. Just recently, the boy's mom came over and they all stayed at Brendan's and they hung out and they call us mom and her mom. That's fine because that's their mom. She gave birth to them. That's their mom. I'm another mom that got to help raise them. And I'm not uncomfortable with it. And we don't make them feel uncomfortable. Don't make the birth families feel uncomfortable. Don't keep reminding them that they screwed up. Don't keep reminding the kids that they screwed up. We all screw up. He who has never done anything wrong, raise your hand. I bet you none of you yet can raise your hand. As parents, as adoptive parents, as foster parents, we need to help heal. We need to help the healing process. Not to build ourselves up. Or to cause division. Because listen, if your goal is to separate that bond, maybe you don't like the fact that your kids still love their birth families and want to be with their birth moms and birth dads. So maybe you say things to, to kind of sever that. It will never work. It will never work. It won't. Because they're always going to want to have a relationship with their birth families. It's their blood. It's their birth families. It makes sense. You're fighting against a lost cause. In the end, it's going to be bitter and anger and some of them might just leave and they'll stop having a relationship with you because they got sick of hearing all the time 
how bad their birth families were. Because, for example, if you tell me that my mom is garbage and she did this, then I'm going to feel like garbage, right? Because that's my mom and we're family. So if she's like that, then I got to be like that, right? I just don't understand. I don't get it. The whole break somebody down to build somebody up. I don't understand that at all. And, I, and I'm, I'm not perfect. I have to say this because I know some people keep saying, you're so perfect. I'm not perfect. But I know what needs to happen to heal a family. And I have to be honest with you. I can sit here and tell you 100%. I love all my kids' birth parents, even the ones that hate me. I love them because I love my children. I support them because I love my children. I lift them up because I love my children. When you love somebody, you put aside your feelings and your motives and your actions to show them that you love them, right? So if you love them, then you have to love their birth families because that's a part of who they are. You don't have to like their actions. You don't have to like their words, but you still have to love them and praise them. Always praise them. Always praise them in front of your children because your children are a part of them. They're, my kids are not a part of me. They love me. They accept me as their mom. And I am so grateful. You don't even know how grateful I am that they allow me to be their mom. They, they call me mom. I do not deserve any of that. But I have to make sure that I'm doing the same for them, right? Unconditional love. You know what love is? It's the giving of yourself for the benefits of others without thought of return. You love people because you love them, not because what you can get back from them. Love is sacrificial. It's giving your whole self. It is. It's giving your whole self. Not expecting anything. No praise, nothing. We've done lots of stuff for birth families. I never ask for anything back. I love them so much. Even kids who have gone back to their families, I see the success stories and I just cry. I'm so happy for them. I'm telling you, there are some great, my kids have great birth families. They do, you know, and, but we don't push them either. We don't push our kids into anything in their time, right? Because they're growing up, they're dealing with enough. When some of them haven't reconnected, they've connected with some family, like maybe siblings, cousins, aunts and uncles, and some haven't reconnected with family, but that's in their time. But I'm always going to praise them. And let's say one of my kids walk in and say, hey, mom, I want to find my birth mom. Can you help me? Yeah, absolutely. Is it going to be tough? It might be tough. But you want to be a help to your kids. Okay, you want to be a help to your kids. You want to make those birth parents look even better than you. Because that's what we do, right? That's sacrificial love. That's what we do. So this is just some of the things that me and my husband have done and we chose to do. Um, right now I have family, my kids searching for siblings, searching for parents, and I'm helping them. And it's sad to me because I got great kids. Whew, I got, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. And some of these parents that are struggling, you know, I pray for them, but they're missing out on the blessing of not getting to know these kids. They're great kids. And my kids have gone through some pretty serious crap that we'll never share. That's another thing. I'll never share that with you. I'll never share if they go places for certain things or if they take stuff for certain things or what their stories were. And I don't pry my kids. And, but they know though, if you ever need to talk about something or you ever struggle, you, you can come to me. But we've always taught our kids to be open if they had a concern about their birth families or concern about anybody, siblings, whatever, to talk, that we're okay. You can talk to us. We're not going to judge you. We're not going to be upset. And I, and I, like I tell my kids, some of my kids, it's so hard not to say names. Don't feel uncomfortable talking to me about your birth mom and wanting to find them or talk to them. Don't feel uncomfortable with me about wanting to find your birth dad or your cousins. Or don't feel uncomfortable with me telling me that you're going to go out to dinner with them. It's okay. We want you to do that. We want you to build that relationship 
or rekindle that relationship or strengthen that relationship because you know what? I get to cook for even more people then, right? We get to have more people for holidays. We get to have a bigger bench when we all go watch Noah play soccer. It's only going to make us better and it's only going to make us a stronger unit. It's going to make our family even bigger and it's going to make us happier. I mean, I got kids that are going to be getting married soon and having grandkids. I want their birth parents to be a part of that. It just makes sense. I know this was kind of a long video, but I just, I, I, I'm seeing everywhere. I have a lot of creator friends that have adopted in foster care and they've talked about birth parents and they've discussed birth parents. They've asked me, what should I do? Should I share this? Should I be careful with this? Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should. Because I'm sharing my family and our, our adoption story. The other side is not for me to share. Even though there's some great stories, great stories of healing, great stories of reunification, great stories of how birth parents have changed and they're doing so great and rekindling relationships, even though it's still positive and it's just amazing, it's not mine. And I'll say it over and over, it's not mine. I can only share with you our side and us bringing them in and how we got through obstacles and how we did this. And I just, just because parents have to put their kids in foster care or they get taken for foster care, doesn't mean they're bad people. It doesn't mean they're lower class. It doesn't mean I'm any better than them. It just means they're struggling. They're just struggling and they need help. They need love. They need encouragement and they just need a hug. Maybe they never got hugs as kids. Maybe they had a tough time growing up and they didn't know any different. I'm never going to praise myself. I'm always going to put those birth families first and build them up. Because that's what you do. When you have a blended family, when you adopt children, you adopt the families. Yeah, are there some family members that are not doing good and it's not safe? It is. But our kids are old enough that they understand and they understand because we've always talked about stuff. There are some serious things that, yes, we haven't talked about yet because I do feel like your kids have to grow up, mature, and kind of understand a little more before you bring up some serious situations. Um, but to conclude, we've always been open with our kids. We've always included the birth families if they're doing well. We've always reached out to the birth families to help them in any way we could. We always consider them an extension of our family. We've always prayed for them and we've loved them. Even if they're unlovable, we still love them. And I do believe that's why our kids, I, that's why it hasn't been so hard to be adopted because they know that the ties weren't cut off and that they have an opportunity still to grow those relationships and the door wasn't closed. And I think that gave my kids some peace and healing. It allowed them to be a kid until they got older and then they could address some things. So I just really feel like being open, accepting of their families, even if they're not good people, I think it just gave my kids peace knowing, hey, mom and dad, Heather and Luke, they love our families and I know they love us. And I'm telling you what, by loving those families, your kids are going to see that you love them even more. Does that make sense? And by not sharing their privacy and who their birth parents are, because it's not right to mention names or anything, you know, and we have people over here all the time and yeah, we do vlogs, but for example, with the boys, a uh, birth mom uh, spending the holidays with us, I didn't video when she was around because I didn't want to make her uncomfortable. So I made sure to, if I was going to post a dinner, I would post it before they came over. I would wait before she left because I didn't want her to make her uncomfortable. I didn't want her to feel like she had to be in the video or feel like I was intrusive on her. Does that make sense too? Like I didn't want to put her in a position or any of the birth families. I, didn't, I don't want to put them in a position to feel like they have to do that. 
Um, a while ago, I had asked one of the birth families, hey, would you mind sharing some stuff? And they said, no, I don't feel comfortable. And I'm like, hey, no, I agree. I, 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 I'm really respectful of that. I was ashamed that I even asked. But I wasn't in a good, I wasn't in a place. This was before all my, hey, you got to fix things. I apologized and said, you know what? I should never even asked you. You're right. It's not something to put on here. And I had to apologize to the family member and say, you're so right. I was so ashamed of myself for even asking, would you like to share your thoughts on everything? I was so ashamed of myself and to put her in that position. So I make sure I don't even have this camera on if any birth family's around. It's just, it just takes the whole, like it kind of decompresses everything, you know, and then we can just enjoy being with them. They know we're on here. They all know we're on here. They watch us. But you just don't want to put the birth parents in a position to feel like they have to be in there because you know they're uncomfortable. It's not, it's not a comfortable situation to even lose your children and to watch somebody else raise them. It's not easy. It can't be easy. I don't know what I would do watching somebody else raise my children. I would be thankful that they're safe, but I would struggle. So just for like the relationship, even to keep the relationship strong with my kids and the birth families and us, it's just, it's not meant for this. It's not meant for this. It's, it's that there's a difference between bringing awareness and let's see what, bringing awareness and using it for recognition, I guess, you know. But I, I've done a lot of searching and a lot of, you know, I, I could share lots of stories. I'm sure if I shared all the stories and specifics, oh, we'd grow. We'd grow. People would love it because they love drama, right? They love to see, you know, they like to see the tension. They like to see what builds, you know, but I'm not getting sucked into that like I almost did. So there's my thoughts on that. Um, thank you so much for spending time with me, listening to my thoughts. Make sure to go and follow our page. Subscribe and like Just the Bells 10 and look out for, um, I got lots going on for the holidays, but thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it.